We're making a five ingredient meal. Uh, we're using spaghetti. Uh, when you cook pasta, it is essential that you season the water. It is the only chance you get to season the pasta itself. As my friend uh, Mario Batali says, the water should taste like the sea. So a lot of salt goes into the water. Give the spaghetti a little zhuzh. Uh, in the pan, we browned up our crumbled salami, nice spicy sofrasata. We're making a broccoli rabe or a rapini pasta with some salami, basically, crispy salami. Take your sofrasata out. In the drippings, I added some olive oil, enough to coat the bottom of the pan evenly. To that, we're going to add lots of garlic and crushed red pepper flake. So, we add all of our garlic down into our olive oil. Shaved poly thin, a little crushed red pepper flake, one of our little pantry items, lovely. And then we have our broccoli rabe that went to the spa and took the ice bath and then got dried out. We chopped him up, but I put him right back on the kitchen towel off after I coarse chopped him to help me get him into the pan. Just drop him right down into the pan from your towel. Remember, we had to dry him off so he wouldn't spatter once you put him in the garlic oil. So we're gonna saute this together and let the broccoli rabe finish cooking through. So remember we put it in the hot water bath or the hot tub so we could cook out the bitterness. This is delicious. We're working on the finish, the big finale of our five ingredient pasta supper. When you marry pasta to sauce of any kind, like our broccoli rabe, garlic, crushed red pepper, and salami, when you marry pasta to sauce, you reserve some of the salty, starchy liquid, especially when you're cooking with dry pasta. And that is going to help emulsify all of those flavors and wrap or bathe your pasta with whatever it is you're combining it with. So here we have all of our broccoli rabe, crispy salami, garlic, uh-huh, yes. I just lost my train of thought because it smells so good. So. Then the next element is to take your, uh, about a half a mug of starchy cooking water, throw that into the mix. Whichever cheese you're using, in this case, we're using shredded ricotta salata, which is just when you let some of the liquid fall out of fresh ricotta, it firms up and you grate it. Pecorino cheese, sheep's milk cheese, you know, like Romano cheese, also equally delicious in this if you can't find this. Marry your cheese with the starchy cooking water, with your sauce or other ingredients, and some good EVOO at the end. Oh. Yes! Now, you combine this all together, it is essential when you're cooking to drain the pasta one minute shy of the suggested cooking time on the package. That cooking time is for al dente, or to the tooth, to the bite. And you see, we're going to have carry over cooking here because we're tossing that all together to marry the ingredients. Jeez, I don't even know if I can lift this. Oh my God. <laughs> this makes a lot of pasta. <laughs> now, whoo, that's heavy. Now, I told you we're gonna finish this dish with our fifth ingredient, which is sweet basil, to balance out the spicy sausage in the dish and the crushed red pepper flakes and the bitter greens, yada, yada, yada. When you bring home basil from the grocery store, it does not like the cold. Like tomatoes, you should keep it, it's, it's buddy tomatoes. Keep both of them at room temperature on your counter. Change the water every couple of days, just as if you were dealing with fresh flowers. Oh, it smells fabulous. Anyway. Um, in my family, another thing we usually don't do is put a knife on basil because it bruises it. But it is very pretty, if you're serving company, to pile the leaves together and chiffonade them, roll them into a log, and then shred them with your knife, keeping the tip of the knife on the cutting board, and it turns it into beautiful basil confetti. Ooh, 